All right, shalom again, shalom Rastafari, because sometimes we record on um, the cell, the cell phone, and sometimes brothers and sisters might call through, and when we're into this, we, we try to stay into this, um, uh, and um, let's let's get into this, we'll, we'll try to contact the caller, the overstand, um, as because this is before the Shabbat, and we're trying to prepare this before the Shabbat, that's what you should be about, preparing before the Shabbat as well studying this, going over this, making notes of this, um, testing your knowledge on this. So we were speaking about how Moses, right, and this is, um, uh, which artist is this right here? Um, this is uh, Moses pleading with Israel, an illustration from a Bible card published in 1907 by the Providence Lithograph Company right here. Do you understand? And um, Moses right here, let's just just click on this, get a larger one. Because here, Moses is, um, he had asked Yahweh, because he knew he wasn't going into the, the, the promised land because of, you know, what had happened. How him and his brother um, failed to give glory to Jah because of the people, the overstand the people who Jah would have removed already. You know, we have a teaching on how when Jah calls you, you bring along Lot. You overstand, and and then you bring along a lot of trouble with you. Jack called you. You overstand. Oftentimes, it's almost like you know they say misery loves company, but that's why Jack, when he calls you, he calls you. He didn't ask you to bring, you know, your sister, brother, mother, father, son, daughter, or whoever else who is not willing, who has not made their wills obedient to the good influence. You love them for Christ's sake, yet you you be obedient to the one girl in the gospel and the good news. You overstand. Don't fret them. Don't frustrate them. Don't take your mind off of the word and don't stop beholding Yeshua. So here is this particular picture right here. You can see it large, so forth and so on. Even some of these pictures will be good, you know, for the artists who have the skills and, and who the Holy Spirit gives the um, inspiration to, to, to paint them or to draw them. You understand, in our image, in the true image of, of Beit Israel. But some of them still are interesting as well. We'll get into a study of art. You understand, because art, you know, interpreting art. You understand, what is, what is right about this picture? Because there's some things that are right about this picture, but also what may be wrong or incorrect about this particular picture. All right, it's the Holy Spirit that guides us. You understand? That's why we keep mentioning the Memphis Caduce. It's very important because Yeshua mentions the Memphis Caduce. And even His Imperial Majesty in that Memphis Caduce and manifesting that Memphis Caduce. All right? Now, Moses right here, this Parsha right here, let's get through this, right? Um, tells of Moses, he asked to see the land of Israel or the Eret, the Eret. It's Israel, or Israel, the Eretz, it's Israel, right? And he puts forth arguments to the Beta Israelites, right? He puts forth arguments to them to obey Torah. He recounts the setting up of the cities of refuge. Now, that's important to us, especially in this time, um, because many are, you know, um, asking for prayers and assistance and other strength on guidance and and the situation they're in. The cities of refuge, when you study the cities of refuge and then you link it with the New Testament sense of church where they shall run you out of the synagogues, but now they may run us out of the churches. They may run us out of certain families. They may run us out of certain situations we were in. You understand? Because the light of God in Christ is upon I and I and now the waters are divided. You understand? So these cities of refuge became the gathering for the first century Christians. So we have the Old Testament, which was the um, shadow, and now in the New Testament is the substance. So we are studying the shadow here, but in the light of Christ, therefore getting the overstanding or the substance. Now, Moses also recites the Asher Tukalat, or the ten words that are euphemistically called the Ten Commandments, but we know it's one command. The Ten Commandments is one command with ten words. And the Shema, the Shema Yisrael, the Shema, hear O Israel. He also gives instructions to the Beta Israel or the Israelite Israelianoch 
in their conquest of the land. So all of these are relevant for us as true Rastafari in this very day and time. If we have the Holy Spirit, if we have the Isla Iret, if you please, to see and to receive. Now, as the Parsha, the Kufra, the portion, it describes how the Beta Israel, the Israelites, would sin, would miss the mark, commit khatiyat, and they would be banished from the land of Israel. So if we look at our situation as so-called um, lost sheep, or Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, and black people in the Americas and the Caribbean and scattered throughout the world, you'll think for 400 plus years, this is the fulfillment. This is now... This, is, this was prophesied then, but we are now on the tail end of the fulfillment of this. But still, there's a warning for I and I. You know what I'm Now, we as black Jews, Hebrews, Beta Israel, Ethiopian Hebrews, elect Arastafari, we also read part of this Parsha Kufal, which is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 25 to verse 40, as the Torah or Orit reading for the morning, what's known as the Shaharit, the morning prayer service on Tisha Ba'av, Tisha Ba'av, the ninth of the month of Ba'av, which commemorates the destruction of both the first temple and the second temple, or 70 A.D., 70 A.D., Jerusalem, or Jerusalem. all right, so we want to point this out to you as well right here. So this is the opening part. So if you don't have the, the, um, the, the fifth book, the Torah portion that we publish, where we take all of these and put them together in one, in one volume. And now we're working on the Amharic or the, the Metaf Kedus, the, the, the Torah of His Majesty, the Orit. In other words, now looking at this basic structure within the light of the Amharic. You understand, and within the revised and hard Bible of his imperial majesty. Now that brings us to one more area we want to show the eye, and let's see if we can go here. You can type in Hila, right? Hila Selase, right? Hila Selase, right? And then you can put Bible, right? And usually it should probably select. It depends on what browser you're using. And we're clicking on that. So we look up Hila Selassie Bible. So now the first one that you can see we've already been here before, right? This link this is Hila Selassie, the Hila Selassie Bible, the Amharic Bible. Um, and we click on this right here, right? We click on this. And this is online. Let's see if we can give you this uh, center to this right here at least you can see okay over here is the, the chapters and you can read this up here this is the English part give thanks to the Lapsley Brooks Foundation and to the others who work together to um, digitalize this um, um, the Ethiopian Bible Society 1992 to 1993 Ato Kabeda Mamo director the Bible was computerized by Cheruye, um, um, what is it, Sige, Sige, I think they misspelled the name right here, um, here by Marinya, uh, uh, Heru, Heru, Sige, right, and, uh, Bala Betacho was Zero Gennet, right, and his wife Gennet, they, um, typeset this. He oversand they basically typeset this. Then we have a Dirk Rockman and others, so forth and so on, that were part of putting this in. But this is His Majesty's, right? This is His Majesty's Bible here. He oversand all the authorized um, 1961 Amharic Bible. It's like they have the King James Bible in that sense, and it's the authorized one. Well, Kedamawi Haile Selassie's is the authorized one for I and I. Right, and for the faithful Ethiopians and the faithful Hebrews, right, and the, the elect Rastafari. So, here let's go to the beginning of this particular reading, and let's go again over this. It constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to chapter 7, verse 11, right? So, just to give you a little idea, 
of how such a reading would go in a gathering, let's just focus once more on this this verse right here from from First uh, Corinthians chapter fourteen, uh, verse twenty six. And let's click on it. So this is the this is the Blue Letter Bible, right here. This is more or less an example. If you're online, how you can utilize this study and how you can some of the key pages and the key sites that you can utilize in your study, even if you, you might lack the, the, the physical materials. What you should have is your adapter or your, your composition notebook, and you should utilize your composition notebook to take notes of these things and, and make copies of the specific sections. Because there's much out here, if you try to copy the whole thing, that's just greed. You understand? Just don't deal with that greed. It slows down. You know, um, it slows down your, your, your growth because greed is a hot yacht. So don't be, oh, i got to print out everything. Uh, you, you understand? That may not be necessary. You understand for what? For, for the stage and, and, and the point that you're at. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says this. It says, follow charity. Desire spiritual gifts. So those who say that God is not invisible, which is in a sense denying the spirit, Therefore, they, they're not going to receive those spiritual gifts. And one of the spiritual gifts is the, the gift of tongues or, or languages. So that especially refers to the royal and haric and for those who are desirous to learn and to grow in that. Please keep the faith first and foremost. So follow after charity or after love. And it says desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy, rather that you may see the real prophetic, the, re the, 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 the relevance in, in this day and time. You may be reading about what happened before, or you may be reading this or studying this in the Bible, but desire the ability to see the, the prophecy, the tin beat, the, the, the revelation, so to say, and that you may prophesy as well speak prophetically, that you can speak the prophetic words you understand, in that rhema, in that right now, that right now word, where the word applies right now, even though it might have applied 4,000 years ago, it also applies right now in spirit and in truth. Verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, right, he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not to men, but to God. You understand? So we speak in, the, that's what we talk about, the language of God, right? And once again, let's just go over to the Hala Selassie. Bible right here. In fact, let's go to New Testament for a moment. And what was that? That was uh, 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Andenya Woda Coronto Sawoch over here. And let's go to chapter 14 so we can have this um, a little more parallel. Right? The parallel. This is a little bit small here. I don't know how we can, on this particular browser right here, how we can. Um, Zoom this in. You know, saying how? Let's go to view for a moment. See if we can just zoom this in, or whether we are at the full zoom. Let's. Okay, we can zoom in a little bit. So let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So you can see the letters, the the pure language letters, a little bit more clearly. Let's see how how much we can zoom this in. All right. All right. That's a little better. Okay, and that's a, a little better. We, let's go a little bit more. So, okay, because of the video form of this, so you all can see this on the screen much better, we're going to try to zoom this in as much as we can. All right, here, this, this, is, this is good, all right? So you can see the, okay, so that, that first, that first uh, verse right here is chapter 14, right? That first verse, let's see how Corinthians, okay, Corinthians is over here, so you can see. Okay, it says, first, follow after charity. Charity, make a note of it. These are things you make note of. Charity, you know, or circling your Bible, is love. If you have a good Bible, like the, Sch the Schofield Study Bible, it will tell you charity is love. Some of the new Bibles already translate as love, but some other things they water down or they're ignorant of, so they miss. This is why we say the Schofield Study Bible, the King James version is the, should be the primary and use the other Bibles as secondary references, all right? So it says, follow after charity 
and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So verse 1 right here says, Sikrin, Sikrin, Tekatatalu, Sikrin, Tekatatalu, Sikrin, 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 Tekatatalu, 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 Sikrin, Tekatatalu, Men se sa we, Men se sa we, Sit o ta ne nem, Men se sa we, Sit o ta nem, Ye le ku ne ne, Ye le ku nem, or ye le ku nem, Ye le ku nem, Te ne bi te, Ten beat, me na garin, me na garin, me na garin, be bur tu, be bur tu, be bur tu, lekno, se le gu, se le gu, se le gu. So the whole sentence now, sik rin te katatalu, men se sawi sit otanim, ye lik unem atin beat, me na garin. Be bertu felgu. Be bertu felgu. Right? So this is also kind of also to, to demonstrate how to study. That's what the Fidel, the Amharic Bible, um, homeschooling, teaching you and familiarizing you with the Fidels. So as you learn, as you master the Fidels, you understand, know, first focus on mastering the Fidels. Spend time on, on learning the basic 33. But we're going to go through that as well. Um, in the Nabah Beit, you know what I'm saying? And for those who do complete, we all hope to offer, you know, uh, um, like an honorary um, completion certificate to encourage, to encourage I and I people because, you know, we can be critical, we as people, so we should also encourage good progress, right? So let's go to verse 2 right here. Rokutel um, Hulet, it says, Be le san, be le san. Ye mi na garis, belisan ye mi na garis, le e ge zi a be he re, le e ge zi a be her, en g, en g, en g, le sau, le sau, a ye na garine, a i na garin. Ye mi ya se ta wu la wu Ye mi ya se ta la wu Ye le mi na Ye le mi na Be me ne fe se Be me ne fe se Ge ne gen Ne she ti re ne Mi sh ti re ne Now this is ne gu su se Um in the holy, it must be pronounced as its proper pure letter, which is a Nugusu Shir from Shout. So it's a sh sound. But modern um, Amharic speakers, modern uh, Habashas, Habashas, you know what I'm saying? They basically say it in the soft way. So this is where some of the holiness has gotten watered down. That's why there's more than one H. That's why there's more than one, you know, S. You know, there's two type of T's. They say, they say the T's, the hard one, as T and the soft one as T. But if you let it go, it probably will come down to the same way. They'll be saying both of them, especially after this Siddhat. But anyway, that's a point, point of order right there, right? Because we're dealing with the holy, we should be, focus on the articulation of it. Their men says, again, Mishtirin yinagarale, yinagaral. All right, so this is a little example, you know, saying, of reading, you know, saying, and of studying. But it says here, the Targum, the Targum, um, Targum, is for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. It doesn't say unknown, remember that's in brackets, right? It doesn't say unknown there, it just says in a tongue, Belisan. Speaketh not to men. But to God, for no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit, what? In the what? Menfest. So what's the purpose of this? 
It's a spiritual aspect. You know what I'm saying? How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. He's speaking on the mishtir, mishtirin, right? But he that prophesieth speaketh to men, to edification. Remember that word edification, to building up, to exhortation, right? And comfort. Let's just look at this good source, right? The source right here. So it says right here, it says, ten be ten Ten beaten, ye me nagar, ye me nagar, ye me nagar gun, le manet in la manet building, le manet in la, le manet in la, le manet in la, le memkar, le memkar, le memkar or advice, you understand, or counsel. Le matna na tim le matna na tim and for comfort, you know what I'm saying? Or for the idea is strengthening, but it's strengthening on the psychic, on the soul level. Le so yinagaral for a man or to man, to people to say, to man. So it's like saying if I focus just on reading this and show you all, I know this and I can do this and I can do that, and I don't show you the prophecy. Well, I'm basically speaking to God in your presence, but you're not really being built up at all. That's what Haradi Apollos is saying right here in um, in 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 First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter chapter uh, 14. And let's see if we can even enlarge in this a little bit. Let's zoom in right here. Um, the great thing about this program, it doesn't zoom in all the pages, but it zooms in the page that you're on. This is a Mozilla. Mozilla. Right? But anyway, let's go right here. Okay, you can see this a little bit better because it was small and hopefully if you couldn't see it, you whipped out your Bible. You understand? So you'd be left behind no time. Alright, so right here it says but he that prophesies it. So when we speak about that which is prophetical in this Wengel, in this gospel, right? We are speaking to men, to humanity, to Rastaman. Right and Rasta woman, generically speaking, to to people, even non rasta Gentiles, whether black or whether white. Yes, black and white Gentiles, there are those. Right, but when we speak prophetically, the tin beat, right, the tin the beat, we are speaking to men for their building up, edification, manet, for their exhortation, for their counsel or advice in that sense, memkar, le memkar. For their comfort, le matnanat, right? It says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he who speaks in an unknown tongue, edifieth himself. So if I just go and go back to the Royal Amharic, right, and I just say to myself, or I say to y'all, and y'all don't understand, I say, Belisanya minagar rasun yansal, tenbitinya minagar gin, amachib barun. Yan Tsal. You know, well, well, what is he saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm edifying myself. You know what I'm saying? And now there's nothing wrong with self edification, but that is not the purpose of when we come together in, in the church, in the Beta Christian, when we come together to fellowship. All right? When we come to, together to worship the King of Kings and his Christ, the Father and the Son. So it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies, build up himself. But he that prophesies edifies the what? The church. Now, it's curious the word that's used here for church. Because if you look right here, this is mach, beru, and the, and the final n, right? Or the, 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 the object, the object uh, qualifier, right? This is the object of the verb. So that tells us what this building up uh, focuses on or puts its strength, it's pointing at. So... Because that ni there is focusing attention on this word, that the verb is directed at this word. So machiberu, machiberu means society. Machiberu means association. Machiberu. And the line of Judah is called a machiber. So it's a church too, betargum, in translation. But it's not, it does not say beta Christian, it says the machiber, right? Or the, the oneness, the idea. Even Hebret, right? Hebret. Also, you have Hebrew, Abra, Hebra, in, in that root, that groundation there. 
So here's what Hardy Arlo says, and we can go into more of the Torah portion, but it's important for us to understand how we are to come together in Rastafari, in the Beta Rastafari, according to the Word, according to the King of Kings and His Christ, according to the Spirit of God and Christ. It says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, and I too. I, I would love for us all to be able to speak with the Lisan or the Lisan and the Goose, and the Lisan and the Goose and the Gash, Lisan and the Goose and the Gash. You understand? Know but he says, rather that ye prophesy. See why? Why? Because it's for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Except, except, see, somebody can speak with tongues because they've trained, they can read it. Like, I was able to read things I didn't really understand while I was reading them. I could read it in them heart. You understand? But then I had to get the ability to interpret, except.